Hi guys, welcome back. I finally, um, I'm going to get started on the coyote fur display habitat build. It's not really a habitat, it's just a display. Um, but I've already changed what I'm going to do. In the last bear video, I, or bear habitat video, I showed you that I was going to build a floating shelf to display it on. When I watched that video and I saw the coyote fur display like that, I think I did this. I thought, boy, that really doesn't do the fur justice. So I'm not doing that. I, I don't think it really shows the fur off. Maybe if I did something like this, but I, I yeah, no. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a vertical display. I've got this uh, Eastern Aromatic Cedar Live Edge already cut to the length I want it. It's got saw ridges in it. I'm not going to send this through the planer. All I'm going to do is sand this down. I want those saw ridges. I just want to smooth it up a little bit. And then I'm going to seal it. Put shellac on it. I'm not going to stain it, obviously. I like the red. So this is going to be a pretty quick build. There is one thing I would like to incorporate in here. And I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to fit it in, but I would like to add some metal in here. Originally I thought maybe a, an old trap or part of an old trap, catching it by its nose and then having that bolted to the um, plank. And had I thought of that before last night, I would have picked one up at a thrift store or an antique shop uh, junk store and, and done that. The only traps I have are are working traps, whether I've used them for decoration or what, and I don't really want to waste a working trap on it. So then I thought, well, if I can incorporate this, I'll get some metal in there. So something like this. just to incorporate some metal in it. You know, if I had a little lighter gauge chain, it would probably be a little better, but this is what I have. I have two lengths of this. One just a little, a few more lengths longer than this. Um, I look through my junk and I don't have any other rusty steel chain. So, we'll see if we can make it. Let's get started. I'm going to use the orbital sander. I'm not going to use the belt sander because it's too easy to take too much off. If I wanted to hog a whole bunch off, I would get the belt sander out. If this doesn't work like I anticipate it working, I'll, I'll resort to the belt sander. Um, I am using 120 grit because it's what I have right now. If I had a, a more coarse grit for this, I would probably use it right now. But uh, I think this is going to work all right. So let's get started. I have tack cloth here. And I'm just going to wipe it down. Even though I blow it off. I don't know if you can see it, but there's, it's still picking up dust. This is what I'm going to use. It's a clear shellac. I right, got one opened and stirred up here. This will take several coats of this. because it's just a wall hanging, it's not a piece of furniture. I think three will probably suffice as long as I can get this uh, bark covered well.
right. We're going to let that sit. I can already, I mean, it's not shiny. It's not dry yet, but this isn't shiny anymore. So it's already soaked in that much. I would be surprised if I even have to wait two hours. Alright guys, I'm going to clean this uh, brush up and I'll bring you back when it's time for the second coat. Well, I thought I'd cover this. I, I don't think I have, and if I have, forgive me, I'm going to do it again. But the cleanup for shellac is different than the cleanup for urethane. With urethane you're going to use mineral spirits, uh, something like that. For shellac, you just use ammonia and water. Okay, I'm going to try to draw this out into a hook, a thin hook, to hang the chain links from. that up and punch it. Okay guys, I just made a huge mistake. I thought I was recording. It wasn't. Um, I got it where I wanted it. I just quenched it. I came over to show you and saw it wasn't recording. An hour and a half later I just finished the ring for the chain. dry enough to stand quick and put another coat on. Okay, well I've used files and I can't get it quite where it needs to be with files, so I think I'm going to have to reheat that up and stretch it out a little bit. Which I don't have time to do today because i got to get ready for work. i got about enough time to get a coat on this and i got to shower and get moving. And I decided not to use this chain. It just seemed too big. I wish this one was rusty, um, but it's not. I dug around and found it. 
in my junk. I have some old furniture tacks I'm going to take out of an old chair, and I think I'm going to use some furniture tacks to get this to, uh, you know, like on the underside, so you, you really won't see it. But I want them to be old just in case somebody did happen to see a tack. Uh, but I, I kind of want the fur to show, so I want to be able to twist the legs so the leather isn't visible and it's the fur. So you see you got leather side here. And I don't really want that exposed. I want the fur exposed. So I'm going to have to tack it somehow. I've got an old furniture screw here. So if I've showed you in other videos, I don't remember. But if I take a piece of old furniture apart, um, I like to salvage the, the screws and hardware off them because you never know when it's going to come in handy for repairing a different piece of old furniture if it's missing screws or hardware. I mean, you can't, you can't go to the hardware store and buy that. Now, I could go buy a brand new screw, but that's going to look odd on a chair that's 90 or 100 years old, isn't it? So... tighten it down and have it cock up. So we're going to leave a little bit of play. I pulled some tacks from an old chair. You can see the design. That's what we're going to use. Now I hope we don't see these, but just in case we do, I kind of wanted to go with something like this. There's one in. the best part of the tail that's matted the least kind of out there and you can't see the tack. I think I need another one up here. I think the fur is thick enough to go through. And hide that tack. See, it naturally wants to lay open on this side, so we've got to get it to flatten out. And flat then. So I will straight one. Okay, there it is on the wall. That's not where it's going to end up staying permanently, but I wanted to find a place to hang it to show you what the finished product looked like. You have to forgive the mess. This is uh, the office where all of the 
I don't know if I've ever said this before, but I sell vintage uh, items online. So this is where stuff sits until it sells. I'll give you a little bit more of a close-up. I just can't shoot the whole thing at one time. There you go, guys. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.